Good evening. I'm Dion Guillory. Breaking news just into our newsroom in the last few minutes. Baton Rouge police firing the officer involved in an alleged shooting involving a man named Raheem Howard. This just in the last two hours, all of it caused by controlled burn in Denham Springs. This comes just three days after I first reported about the large number of African Americans dying to the coronavirus. When you were going through the most difficult part of this, what were you thinking? I thought I was going to die. Sigh of relief for her family and the community who have really been taking a really, really close look at this case. A pillar of our community killed. She was found in the trunk of her car. The governor's office has 30 more days to respond to a public information request filed by a woman who claims a former top aide sexually harassed her. All right, good evening, everybody. Dion Gillard here from your local election headquarters. I want to let you know before we even get to these election numbers that you will not miss any of this game. You can see it in the box right there. I'm standing in an area that used to have chairs and tables, but they're now gone. It's because of social distancing. Two words you need to add to your shopping list. When restaurants reopen their dining areas to customers on Friday, social distancing will play a big role. Each available table will be at least six feet apart. Developing now, the former LSU student convicted in a pledge's hazing death is now out of jail. In the last couple of hours, Matthew Nakan posted a $10,000 bond. He was sentenced to five years in prison today. He is expected to serve half that time because of time served. Nakan was convicted in Max Groover's death. Part of his sentencing requires him to talk to high school students about hazing is something Groover's parents say they don't agree with. District Attorney Hiller Moore says Nakan will likely serve no more than 10 months after a series of appeals. New at 6, three men are facing attempted murder charges after shooting someone during an attempted armed robbery. The East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office says Rayshawn Rogers, Jared Hopkins, and Darvion Lathers attempted to rob people at a home in the 5,000 block of Sherrill Drive late last night. Investigators say one of the men eventually got into a scuffle with one of the homeowners, and the other two started shooting at the house. All three are currently booked in the parish prison. The LSU Tigers could have a date with destiny in New Orleans for the national championship in January. Today, the college football playoff host committee shared details about the events leading up to the big game. The free concert series will feature Tim McGraw, Megan Trainer, Her, Nas, and Louisiana native trombone Shorty. Lafayette native Lauren Daigle will perform the national anthem. We're going to continue to respond to any 911 call, any emergency call. East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff Sid Gotro and other first responders all working together during the coronavirus pandemic. The sheriff saying they are no longer booking people for misdemeanors. With the exception, DWI, domestic violence, or violent offenses. Anything that uh, in that, that category, whether it's a misdemeanor or not, they're going to be booked. One change, he requested the courts to see if there are any current inmates who could be released early to reduce the prison population. EMS is also making changes. Okay, so I am going to wear the gear that the EMS uh, operators are going to wear if they are going out to an emergency call. Okay. Oh. This way. Oh, I'm sorry. It goes back. See? <laughs> this is how we're learning together. The gown is tied in the back, then there's a mask. And so this protects the eyes as well. Correct. It's a face shield as well as a uh, mask or face mask. They then tie the gown in the front, put on the gloves and booties for my shoes, protecting all exposed skin. Medical Director Dr. Dan Godby says they are responding to all 911 calls and restricting the number of people in ambulances. Don't be surprised when the 911 operator may ask you a lot of questions. They're trying to provide the best response and most appropriate response to your situation and your condition. All of them agree your safety is most important. I can assure you that in, in regards to public safety, we're not going to turn anybody that needs to be in jail away. Tonight with Baton Rouge police saying activist Sadie Roberts Joseph's death was not a hate crime. Tonight, Ron Bell is in the East Baton Rouge Parish prison charged with her murder. Police say the convicted sex offender was a tenant in one of Roberts Joseph's rental properties and owed her $1,200 in back rent. An emotional turn and an already heartbreaking loss. Tonight, her family is grateful for the outpouring of support. This great job that was done was done in the midst of a hurricane, in the midst of a storm. It was a storm for us in the midst of a storm. That storm has passed for the family of Sadie Roberts Joseph. Baton Rouge police saying this man killed the beloved civil rights activist. As much as I'd like to be at home right now, just wallowing in my own grief, 
I went, cannot do that to her. She worked so hard. She pushed. She got everything that she could out of the 75 years that she lived. Her daughter shedding more light on the impact her mother had on this community. While many questions still remain unanswered about her death, her family is just ready to move forward. I'm still numb. I'm not angry. I'm not, for several days, I wasn't anything. I wasn't anything but numb. Um, but for those who were and are angry, live a better life. Give of yourself to your community to make the whole better. Now, she went on to say there's also solace in knowing and feeling that everything that could possibly be done was being done. Now, the man accused of killing Sadie Roberts Joseph is charged with second degree murder. New at 10 tonight, this is what a Prairieville salon looks like after an SUV drove right through it. The driver now under investigation for DWI. Bang, I thought, personally, I thought it was like an explosion. This is what's left of Graffiti Hair Studio in Prairieville. Owner Charlie Thibodeau says someone drove through the building minutes after opening for the day. Once she hit the wall, the car stopped, but I could still hear the tires moving. I was banging on her door because her window was down, and I just tell her, like, put the car in park, put the car in park. She didn't really seem all there, um, so finally she kind of came to a little bit put the car in park and I could still hear the engine revving. So clearly she was still accelerating. Thibodeau says employees were there and a few customers were inside, but no one was hurt. But look at the damage. You see where the SUV came in from the right side of this picture. Pieces of the wall thrown over the floor, pieces of the ceiling just hanging. You can still see tire marks. The salon just remodeled after 12 years. The new look unveiled just eight days ago. We were fortunate enough to make this space so beautiful and we'll, we'll do it again. It's not, it's just a matter of time. Thibodeau says they have a second location here in Baton Rouge where customers can go. Other salon owners, she says, have offered supplies and chairs for the team to work while they get that shop fixed. This crash is still under investigation.